Hi guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 113, and I hope you guys had a really happy St. Patrick's Day this past week. I hope you got being Irish out of your system for that one day, and now you can go back to living your normal lives. But uh, all that being said, today in this vlog, I wanna talk about some interesting news that came out this past week from the state of Connecticut. Now I'll get into that here in a second, but before I do, if you could go ahead and give me one of those likes, I really appreciate it. And if you are not subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and do that as well so you can get a notification every single time I publish a new video. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about some of this news that came out of the state of Connecticut. So the attorney general office in Connecticut, they actually fined four different companies for using the term FDA approved. Now, if you are unaware of it at this point, there is no such thing as FDA approval for hearing aids. There's something called FDA registered, but there is no such thing as FDA approval. And so what these companies are doing is that they're basically saying that their hearing aids are FDA approved in order to trick consumers to buy their hearing aids thinking that there's some like upper level of approval from the FDA saying that those devices are actually good. Now, if you guys have been following my vlog for a while, about a year and a half ago, I was talking about the state attorney general in the state of Arizona. Now, if you're un, uh, unfamiliar with what an attorney general is, they're basically like advisors for the state on legal matters, um, and they can give their opinions on different things and, and issue warnings and things like that. So uh, to go back to what I was saying, the state attorney general here in my home state of Arizona issued a statement saying that uh, beware of these over the counter hearing aid companies or these companies that claim to be selling over the counter hearing aids because there's no such thing as an over the counter hearing aid technically at this point. There is no final issuance of the FDA guidelines for what an over the counter hearing aid is. And then about, I don't know, six months or so after that, the state attorney general here in Arizona, they obtained an assurance of discontinuance against budget hearing aids and its subsidiary Audion uh, to stop the company from misleading consumers about over the counter hearing aid devices and they own several websites this this budget company owns several websites and advertises FDA approved or FDA registered now they only said here in the state of Arizona that they came to an agreement to stop marketing in that way. So that company still exists and they are still probably trying to figure out ways to get individuals to purchase their devices. And in my opinion, their devices are absolute junk. Now, um, you can find out for yourself, go ahead and order uh, yourself a pair. Just be aware that a lot of these online companies end up selling crappy products to consumers and then when you try to go and get a refund they give you the runaround and hopefully you just like give up on getting your you know two to five hundred dollars back on those devices and you're just like it's not even worth your time uh, to try to get that money back but um, nonetheless the state of Connecticut, the attorney general, uh, basically uh, fined four different companies a total of $40,000 uh, combined between all of them to Lively Hearing Corporation, who does the Listen Lively hearing aids. They fined them $15,000. Um, White X, which is a major hearing aid brand, they got fined $15,000. Uh, Hark Wellness, which I've never heard of, but they're a direct-to-consumer hearing aid company located in New York, they were fined $10,000. And then another direct-to-consumer hearing aid company, again, that I've never heard of, uh, Wonder Ear Inc., was also fined, uh, it looks like an undisclosed amount from what I can tell on this Attorney General uh, press release that came out this last week. Now. You know, the crazy thing about this is, is that some of these are actually like notable companies. Those first two, Listen Lively and Widex, those are name brands that most people would recognize. And they were still using this term FDA approved in their marketing. And it's like, don't they have like lawyers that work at this company to know what you can and cannot say? Um, and, and they're still doing deceptive marketing? Uh, really kind of blows my mind, to be honest with you. Now, um, I actually uh, thought, you know, more highly of these two companies before this report came out, and this does tarnish the reputation a little bit. Now, the thing that um, really you know uh, came out in this article is obviously that use of the term FDA approved, which nobody should be using because that is not an actual thing. So anytime that you see FDA approved on any hearing aid device online or any website, whatever, you know that they are deceptively marketing to you. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you see anything related to FDA, other 
other than FDA registered, which honestly doesn't mean a whole lot, um, you can just assume that uh, whatever you're going to be buying from them, that you're just buying from a company who's trying to deceive you, um, at least based off of what I can tell in this press release. That's my um, uh, what I get out of this press release, basically. Now, there's a couple of different warnings um, that the Attorney General put out in this press release. One of them is that the FDA has not approved any over-the-counter hearing devices. Over-the-counter direct-to-consumer hearing aids are not regulated like many other medical devices and because of this may work poorly or not at all or could be harmful. You should be researching the seller with the Better Business Bureau, which I completely disagree with. I mean, the Better Business Bureau is a pay-to-play thing. Um, now, if you are a company that is poorly rated on the B BBB, then you know that that is a like really a bad company because it takes a lot to get your accreditation taken away when you just all you have to do is essentially pay for it. I remember when I first started up my practice, the Better Business Bureau reached out to me and said, "Hey, you know, we think that you're doing great things over there." And mind you, I've been in business for like a month and I haven't done anything at that point. And they say, "You really, you know, uphold the standard that we look for in a company for the Better Business Bureau, um, and we think that you should become accredited. And how you do that is you basically pay for your accreditation, and that's it. You just send them a check, they accredit you, um, and give you essentially an A minus rating." right off the bat and after you've been in business for a couple of years they switch it to an A and an A plus I believe nonetheless um, that's bogus so I personally would never recommend that anyone goes to the Better Business Bureau the next thing that they said is be skeptical of online reviews and endorsements and I've told you guys as well in previous videos um, that you really should take online reviews with a grain of salt because a lot of these direct-to-consumer online companies they are just fabricating their own online reviews that they have on their website a uh, funny thing is if, if you do an image search on some of the pictures that they have on these reviews, you'll find that they're just stock photos off of Google or you know some other um, website out there and they're not actual people leaving reviews, they're just faking it. You should also read the purchase policy carefully. Uh, can you get a refund if they don't work? How long do you have to make a return if necessary? But here's the thing, with all of these, well not all of these, but a lot of these online companies, they say that you have like a 100 day or 45 day or 90 day money back guarantee no questions asked if you don't if they don't work for you we can find a different device that works for you or you can just return it for a refund um, and I don't know if you guys have seen the actual news reports that have come out of individuals having to call their news station saying hey this particular company is scamming me can you help me get my money back and then the the news team reaches out to the company and they try to get the money back for the consumer sometimes they're successful sometimes they're not but basically when you buy devices online you are rolling the dice of whether or not you're actually going to get a device at all, get a quality device, and if you're going to actually get a refund for the device that you order. So um, I don't think that whether they say that they offer you a refund or not is actually legitimate on a lot of these sites. It says if you can, get a health screening and discuss your options with a medical professional. They will be able to tell you exactly what kind of hearing device would work for you and make recommendations. So I also disagree with that because a health screening to discuss your options with a medical professional is exactly what you do not want to do when it comes to getting hearing aids. You want to either go to a licensed audiologist, which is not a medical professional, or you want to go to a hearing instrument specialist who's been trained on the identification of hearing loss for the purpose of fitting with a hearing aid but if it's not one of those two individuals, then you should not be taking any recommendations on treating your hearing loss um, because you know a, a, a regular, let's say, medical doctor like your primary care doctor, they may, they may say that, oh, you, need, you should go see an audiologist to get a hearing test because you may need hearing aids, but they ultimately don't know. And then on top of that, they have no idea what the differences are between different hearing aids. The ones that tell you to, oh, just you know, go to Costco or just go here or just go there, like they don't really know. I mean, they're just hearing through the grapevine of other people of like, oh, I guess you can just go here and get hearing aids when they don't really know if you actually need hearing aids. But I don't wanna seem like I'm just like bashing a whole bunch of you know people here. I just think that there's a lot of misinformation out there. And while I love that the state attorney general in Connecticut has you know essentially um, issued these fines to these companies who are doing deceptive marketing tactics I do think that there's still misinformation out there for the state's attorney general and and I'm talking about in every single state I mean 
if these companies were selling these products saying that they were FDA approved in the state of Connecticut, it likely means that they were selling devices in every single state. Um, so every single state's attorney general should be fining these companies whatever amount uh, that you know is in correlation with how much uh, how many sales they had in their particular state um, because they're essentially deceiving consumers all over the country. And um, I'm glad that, that my state of Arizona has issued some warnings on this and has come to agreements with certain companies to stop their deceptive marketing tactics. But the thing that you need to know is, is that there's very few individuals out there actually trying to protect you from being scammed when it comes to your hearing loss and your hearing treatment options. Um, the FDA, quite honestly, I, I really don't think that they care a whole lot. They're just being tasked with creating these FDA guidelines. I don't think there'll be a whole lot of teeth behind them. I am very much a free market individual. Um, I think that you need to be educated enough to make your own decisions. And if you think that over-the-counter is what's right for you, who am I to tell you that you can't go and get over-the-counter devices? I just want to make it safe for you. And if you end up not having success with over-the-counter hearing aids, I want you to be informed enough to be able to know that you need to go in and get a professional evaluation and professional treatment in order, in order to overcome your actual hearing loss. So um, I think I've effectively rambled on today. Again, uh, I applaud the state attorney general of the state of Connecticut. I hope many, many more states actually come to the same conclusions and protect their individuals in their state just as much as Connecticut just did. Um, if these companies continue to do deceptive marketing tactics, I presume that the fines will get bigger and bigger from here on out. But to be honest with you, this is probably part of the learning curve for a lot of these direct-to-consumer online hearing aids. Uh, this by no means is the first time that, that companies like these will get fined for doing things that they should not be doing. Um, part of it might be because they just don't know, and part of it is probably because they're just trying to see what they can actually get away with. Uh, but that is all for today's vlog, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, again, go ahead and give it a huge like. And as always, I'll see you next week. Well,